and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. High Court judges have decided that doctors cannot kill a severely paralysed man in a landmark euthanasia ruling. Tony Nicholson suffers from locked-in syndrome, which means his mind is active but he cannot move his body. The court also ruled against a second man known as Martin, who asked for the right to call on others to help him die. Lord Justice Toulson, who was sitting with two other judges, said it was not for the court to change the law in this area. He said, a decision to allow their claims would have consequences far beyond the present cases. Mr Nicholson, who can communicate through blinking, said he would appeal. The Christian Institute's Mike Judge gave this reaction to the ruling. Well, we do welcome this week's ruling that euthanasia is illegal in Britain. I think it is important that our courts uh, underline that fact. That the reality is that if we allowed euthanasia in this country, all sorts of vulnerable people would be put under great pressure to end their lives. And I don't believe that any life is not worth living in this country. All life is valuable, all life is precious, and all life deserves protection under the law. The government is to consider a permanent move to extended Sunday trading hours which have been in temporary operation during the Olympics and Paralympics. Those in favour believe relaxing opening hours would give a boost to the economy, but many MPs say they would not have supported the temporary deregulation if they had thought it would become permanent. Conservative MP Mark Pritchard said that many people spend Sunday with their families and pointed out that a permanent change would harm small traders, workers' rights and further damage relations between the church and the government. And Labour's Chuka Amuna, the party's business secretary, commented that a temporary relaxation of Sunday trading restrictions should not be used as a Trojan horse for permanent change. The owners of a Cornish guest house who were sued over their policy of restricting double rooms to married couples have won permission to take their case to the UK Supreme Court, the nation's highest court. Peter and Hazel Mary Ball's double room policy stems from their deep-rooted Christian faith and has been consistently applied to all unmarried couples, whether homosexual or heterosexual, since they opened in 1986. But last year, Mr and Mrs Bull were ordered to pay £3,600 in damages after a homosexual couple took them to court, claiming their policy was discriminatory. The Bulls deny the accusation, pointing out that their policy was directed against sexual practice, not sexual orientation. A date has yet to be fixed for the Supreme Court hearing. Former drug addict Russell Brand has backed abstinence as the best way to get people off drugs and criticised the use of heroin substitute methadone. He appears to favour the decriminalisation of drugs and says drug addiction is a health issue rather than a criminal issue. Mr Brand, who used to be addicted to heroin, became clean with the help of support group Focus 12. The charity headed by Chip Summers aims to get people off drinking drugs so that they are able to remain abstinent and enjoy an improved quality of life. Mr Brand praised the work of the charity on BBC's Newsnight programme. Just saying that if a social problem like drug addiction and alcoholism exists, there should be the proper, responsible, conscientious treatment. There are gentlemen like Chip Summers who understand how abstinence-based recovery works. My job is simply to draw attention to abstinence-based recovery. Yeah. That's all I want to do. And a component yeah. of that is a tolerance and understanding to and people unwell. If this, this affects people's lives all over our country. Okay. A survey of Tory members has revealed that dropping controversial policies like same-sex marriage could help them win the next general election. Influential blog Conservative Home asked 1,419 party members to rate 23 campaign ideas on how likely they would be to help the party win the next general election. They ranked signs of reasonable economic recovery and a successful debt reduction policy as the two most important factors for winning re-election. But they also said that dropping controversial policies like House of Lords reform and gay marriage was important, ranking this in seventh place and above a strong commitment to protect the NHS. The Church of England is to keep the same number of bishops in the House of Lords after plans to reform the upper chamber were dropped. There are currently 26 Church of England bishops known as the Lords Spiritual. They read prayers at the start of each daily meeting and play an active role in the life and work of the Lords. The Right Reverend Tim Stevens, the convener of the Lords Spiritual, said, The decision not to proceed with this bill gives Parliament and the country a welcome opportunity to pause and think again about what it wants a second chamber to do, not just who it wants as its members. 
And finally, some of this year's top Olympic athletes have been talking about the importance of their faith following recent success at the London Games. Christian gold medal winning gymnast Gabby Douglas wowed the crowds with her stunning performances, but she says her success is all down to God. She wrote on her Facebook page, It's a dream come true. Got to give God the glory. Thank you everyone for praying for me. David Budaya also won gold, beating Great Britain's Tom Daly in the 10 metres diving competition. But David's qualifying round had not gone well and only scraped through to the final in 18th place. After that he said, I know God is perfect and sovereign and if I made it, great. If I didn't, great. So I was totally content. And 200 metre winner Alison Felix takes no credit for her success. Alison says her running is a gift from God and she has a responsibility to use it to glorify him. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.